Gaddafi has a poem he wrote in 1896, Confusion. My soul in the middle of the night is confused and paralyzed. Outside, its life comes into being outside itself. And it awaits the improbable dawn, and I await and worn down and am bored, even I who am in it or with it. On a balcony on a brand new high rise facing the inky blackness of the mountains rising sheer in our face, an elegant young law professor, whiskey in hand, expounds on the history of the new constitution of 1991. But each story requires another one to explain it. We get locked into a labyrinth of interconnecting, incomplete stories in a sort of hysteria of history, with the native being egged on by the outsider for the sake of the newcomer. <clears throat> The law is the native, <laughs> I'm the outsider, and Lily Hibbert is the newcomer who it's all getting explained to. Yeah, and what happened then? It, it is cold under these stars with all this glass and shiny steel around us. 22 stories below threads the light of traffic like a string of pearls. The new constitution came about largely because of the student movement, he says. A bunch of 18-year-olds, many from the Jesuit University, the M19 guerrilla came aboard later, as did the FARC guerrilla, who were ready to sign on, but the government couldn't tolerate that, so he bombed them from the air. The government needs the guerrilla, the Antichrist, this their best ally, better even than the USA. The students had a stimulating conversation with the leader of the M19 when he signed on. What was meant to be a five-minute formality extended to three hours of animated conversation. Next day, he was assassinated. The stars are fiercely alive at this high, they are technically dead. It's just that it takes so long for their light to reach us through this cold air. A burly ex-M19 guerrillero looks on, but does not say much. He seems strangely absent, now a non-being, on the wrong side of history, out of place in their shimmering towers. He belongs to the impenetrable blackness of the past where history becomes someone else's story. Faulkner not only told stories, but told the language, something that in his case at least might have been easier because he worked in a circumscribed area that was his territory, if not his home. His novels were autoethnographic and the exotic lay more with his readers and his use of language moving back and forth across that thin membrane where inner and outer worlds meet and dissolve. He saw worlds glued to what they meant and then he unglued them, so they soared. He wrote with the limitless power of what I came to call in Colombia multiple realities, whereby each person sees the same thing differently. Like, as I lay dying, in which he has separate chapters for the thoughts of each member of a dead woman's family. Susan Willis, who teaches here, told me that Faulkner wanted the book printed such that each person's chapter would have a separate color. In my town in Colombia, this municipality, of, this multiplicity of reality became apparent to me under three conditions. Stories of the origins of local saints, stories as to how corpses on the roads in the town got to be there, and when I started to write about these things. Sometimes when you write, feel notes, time stands still, and an image takes its place. On occasions, the image is tactile. Just about the softest thing I ever touched, softest thing I ever touched was powdered coca leaf prepared by the Witoto Indians of the Agara Parana and Caraparana affluence of the Putamaya River, which itself runs into the Amazon. Mm -hmm.